Okay, it is now seven o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's uh, virtual writers workshop. My name is Salem. I will be serving as your host tonight and will help navigate questions. Our topic tonight is Poems from Prompts uh, with local poet Jim O'Brien. Um, before I, I introduce Jim, I do want to give a few updates about the library. Um, so we expanded our hours and services um, in March and are offering um, meeting and study rooms. Um, so for more information, be sure to check out our website, champagne.org. Um, if you don't feel comfortable coming into the library just yet, that's okay. Um, we are continuing our curbside delivery service. This is where you can request items at home and pick them up in front of the library. Uh, for more information on that, please visit champagne.org slash curbside. If you need help um, and you want to reach out to staff, there are a few ways you can do that. So you can book a librarian at champagne.org slash book a librarian. You can chat with us anytime the library is open and you can email us at librarian at champagne.org. Um, I also want to share a few instructions for communicating through Zoom tonight. Um, so depending on your device at the bottom of the screen, um, you should see the option uh, towards the center, you should see the option to chat with us, which will allow you to type your question in. Next to that is the raise hand option. Um, this is if you wanna use your microphone, so raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, Jim will be answering questions throughout his presentation, so feel free to pop a question in the chat or raise your hand. I also wanna share um, some information about uh, a Community and Campus Collaboration. Um, it's presented by Cranert Art Museum um, and it's called Pandemics as a Portal to Change. Um, it is a public call for creativity, including uh, writing, visual arts, original music and video. Um, and they're inviting the community, community and students to take one of our current struggles and imagine how we might make a change and reimagine our world. Um, I'm sharing this here since writing is one of the areas of um, creative work they are seeking. Um, I'm going to include a link in the chat with more details about um, submission requirements and deadlines. So the deadline to submit is April 19th. All right, with that said, I'd like to now introduce our presenter. So Jim is a local poet um, and founder of the CU Poetry Group um, that helps writers connect and collaborate with one another. Um, tonight, he's here to share some tips to help you enhance your poem. Jim, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Thank you for having me. I will uh, share my screen and we'll see some slides. And welcome again to the Writer's Workshop at Champaign Public Library. As Solemn said, that's me. We're going to look at poems for prompts, writing prompt sources and samples. Um, as she said, a local poet, co-founder of CU Poetry, co-curator of CU Haiku, which is a feature in the Sunday News Gazette each week. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then I also do, or used to do, Poems on Tap, where I'd sit with a typewriter and engage people and write a poem for them on demand, which is like a series of immediate prompts because it's a new person, new poem each time. So let's dive in. As many of you know, April is National Poetry Writing Month, or National Poetry Month here in the United States. And um, several years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, the novel writing folks took over November as what they called NAPO, no, um, NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. And so a, a parallel organization sprung up, National Poetry Writing Month, the NaPoWriMo. And they have a, a nice website that has um, a prompt each day, and for example, today's prompt at www.naplerimo.net is go to a book you love, find a short line that strikes you, make that line the title of your poem, write a poem inspired by the line, and then after you're finished, change the line completely. 
I would add this also works first. Music, I find a lot of my poems spring from songs that I've heard that I like and love. So um, if you're interested in that, take note of naporimo.net. So why prompts? As I said, April's National Poetry Writing Month. 30 poems in 30 days seems um, over overwhelming, maybe a challenge anyway. So, but it can be done. Um, last year being fresh in the work from home and unknown future, uh, I opted to go with a haiku each day for the month of April because that seemed to be all my attention span could handle. Uh, not that haiku takes less attention than, than a longer poem, but it just worked for me. Um, so why, again, why prompts? Inspiration is a fickle muse. So if you just take a notebook or a laptop out somewhere, even at your own desk or writing area and say, I'm gonna write something, you may not end up actually doing that. You may end up um, surfing the net or uh, if people still say that, but checking social media and all of that. And then another thing about prompts, if you commit to doing a prompt or at least looking at one, it helps promote the BIC practice, which is the butt in chair, which is really the key to getting any writing done. You've got to find a space, find a place, and just commit to writing something for a few minutes. Now with poetry in particular, um, maybe any writing, but there's, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself. So I would like to start with a free write that I do um, on occasion, especially if I'm feeling stuck or overwhelmed and just need to, to, to evacuate some, some notions from my head, I will do this next, um, this next exercise and I'm gonna ask you to do it also. So we're gonna have a few moments of quiet. So if you are on, uh, laptop, then just open a, a fresh word processor. If you're using a notebook as I am, um, just take a pen and paper and write, literally write at the top of the page or the section, this page does not count. Now you are relieved of all pressure to make anything that makes any sense. And once you have that on there, then take I said five, maybe three to five minutes um, and just write anything. It could be lyrics to the last song you heard on the radio or um, whatever was well, the last thing you heard at work if you worked today, um, just to clear the, the mind and cleanse the palate. So um, let's start right now. I'll go on mute and then I'll bring us back in a couple of minutes. So take another moment and wind up your, your line that you're on or your particular thought or image or whatever you have going on. So that helped me open me up anyway. Uh, I'll be doing the prompts along with you as we get forward, as we move forward, and and that helped to um, bring me to it. So let's talk about types of prompts for a moment. There are a wide variety of prompts, and I'm just going to highlight a few different types. Uh, Ekphrastic, many of you may have heard of. Uh, it is writing to a piece of art. Could be a painting, could be a sculpture, could potentially be music. Um, I don't think there's any limitations. I don't like any limitations in poetry. So um, I write acrostics to all sorts of things, even a sunset or a picture of a sunset or the sunset itself. That's the real art. Um, and then there's also simple prompts and more complex prompts that are more specific. And then we'll talk a little bit about forms also. 
So acrostic poems, one of the most um, probably well-known, although I certainly couldn't recite it, but one of the first ones I'd heard of, Ode on a Grecian Urn by Keats, um, the OED, I need to do some screen maneuvering here, sorry. OED defines ekphrastic as employing, characterized by, or relating to a liter literary device in which a painting, sculpture, or other work of visual art is described in detail. And if you've seen Keats' poem, it um, does, I think it does that. One I like is um, a poem by William Carlos Williams that is based on this painting. So this painting is called The Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. And at the time that um, William Carlos Williams wrote his poem in um, 1960, it was believed that the painting was done by a painter um, with my wood Midwest pronunciation is probably Peter Brugel, B-R-U-E-G-E-L, in 1555. And there's just a seaside scene of farmer ships, and there's a splash and a couple of legs sticking up. And so I'm going to read the poem that um, William Carlos Williams wrote for that. According to Brugel, when Icarus fell, it was spring. A farmer was plowing his field. The whole pageantry of the year was awake, tingling near the edge of the sea, concerned with itself, sweating in the sun that melted the wings wax. Unsignificantly off the coast, there was a splash quite unnoticed. This was Icarus drowning. Which I think is a beautiful poem and I love that it, um, takes just one aspect of the of the painting. It touches on the whole painting, but he's really focusing just on that splash. Um, as I said, this was written in 1960. Unfortunately, in 1996, investigators determined that the painting is actually a good early copy of a lost original. So we don't know who really painted that painting that, um, that Williams saw and wrote the poem to, but it most likely was not Brugel. So doesn't matter, doesn't change the poem. Although um, be, I guess be careful with some specifics unless you can verify them. Also speaking of, um, of the uh, ekphrastics, uh, as Salam noted that project or, uh, with Cranert, it's the same project I think, She'll, she'll clear that up when we get to the end, but uh, also keep, uh, you know, pay attention, not pay attention, but watch for things that come around because last year, I guess it would have been pre-pandemic, but Urbana Public Arts did a, a postcard project and they had also had previously works of art up in downtown Urbana that you could go and write a poem to and they selected poems for that. So explore ekphrastics um, in any way you can, even if it's uh, images on the computer are, are no less than, uh, are actually more available than anything else, but we have Cranert Art Museum, Spurlock Museum, a lot of resources uh, in Champaign-Urbana for art that you can make an ekphrastic from. We're not going to do one tonight though, but we will be doing a prompt off of one of these. So there's another organization. I'm gonna talk about a lot of, uh, part of this is sources for prompts. So um, with Ekphrastic, I met, left off um, Rattle Magazine. If you're familiar with them, you can, you can look them up. They do, I think a monthly Ekphrastic challenge where they post an image and then ask people to submit poems to them. Um, this organization, Writers Relief, is also a website. They mostly specialize in helping writers um, with their submissions, and uh, but they do that for a fee. But they have plenty of free 
options also on free material. So um, they have for for National Poetry Month in the U.S. some prompts up, and these are these are short prompts that I like. They don't give you a lot of detail. They're not very specific. Um, they are just simple images and you can go anywhere with them. So they suggest you may want to write about momentous occasions and there's some examples of that. Also, you may want to write about mysterious places. Imagine you are between stars, um, particles, dreams, flames in a fireplace, the blue jay uh, in the tree, anywhere that seems mysterious to you, what it would be like to be a bird. So now we're gonna try a, um, one of these. So I'm gonna ask you to choose one of these short prompts or choose one completely of your own. And we are again, going to write for five minutes. The only expectation is to, um, that you have to stop writing at the end of five minutes, but pick an image, uh, an occasion, a place, and we're gonna start. Uh, before we start, I guess I should ask, are there any questions? All right, Salam, just give me a heads up if there is one. And um, okay, so pick a prompt. I'm gonna go with a mysterious place and we'll be back in five minutes. Okay, try to wrap that up when you can. And again, these are just drafts we are drawing. I or drafts we are writing. I broke one of my my own rules for drafts that I should have said, and that is, it's a draft. So just go with everything. But um, I couldn't resist scratching a bit out and redoing it. So not supposed to be editing while we're drafting, but nobody's perfect. Uh, so as I said, um, myster my mysterious place was a nest of morning doves. And my draft of it is last year, they tried on a board running the length of our neighbor's fence. The nest went up quickly, but came down even faster. They, this dedicated mating pair, did not know they had built on a squirrel run. The bushy tails ousted them. I worry about what lies beneath the foundations of my life, what perils are as yet unknown. But today I hear the morning doves in a new location, safer, maybe, soothing, definitely. So that's something I can probably work with um, later down the road. Um, it's that time of year when all the birds are out making themselves known. So there we go. And then this is just um, what we just did, that free, free write um, on the short prompt. So again, check out Writer's Relief if you want. There are many other um, places that we will hit on before this is over. Um, if you are doing the the 30 poems in 30 days for April, I am very happy for you. Uh, so far, I'm, I'm, I've made it as I, I might have said earlier. So we'll see, it's a long month. Um, next, let's, there are also places that have very long prompts. And one of them is an organization online, and they're also a book publisher, and they put out a few chat books a couple times a year called, they're called Two Sylvia's Press. 
I know one of them is Sylvia Plath. I'm not sure who the second one is, but there are two Sylvias apparently. Um, so a couple times a year, usually in, well, April, I think they have one going right now. And then again in November, December, they'll do one. So for about $15, they will send you uh, or give you access to a, a new prompt every day. And each prompt has a big, colorful, artful um, photo, or not photo, but drawing with it. And then the text that is generally a long prompt. And this is a sample from last year. And I wrote them and asked if I could use it for this workshop. And they said, absolutely. Um, so dear, this poem, each, each prompt that they do, the daily prompt has a theme and the theme for this day was back to the future poetry style. Write a poem that takes place at a future date. You can jump ahead. Um, you guys can read that faster than I can read it to you. And I've subscribed I've, to a couple of these the last few years, the 30 day stints, and they just don't work for me because for the most part, they're, they're too, they're fun, they're fun to read, but I've never, I'm not sure I've ever written a poem that related to it. I've picked pieces and, and parts from them, but if long specific prompts like that appeal to you, by all means, check out Two Sylvia's Press and um, look for their, their poem challenge. They um, have a, a bunch of, of books and chat books that you can purchase from from their uh, that they have have edited and put out and published so and they're both really nice people um kelly is one and i forget the other one's name maybe it's sylvia but i think it's renee and then another one um writer's digest which is a magazine for for writers um, i've subscribed in the past they're their magazine is a lot of writing tips, but they it's it's split among fiction, creative nonfiction, and poetry. And poetry it seems to get the short shrift on that in the magazine. But their website and the Robert Lee Brewer, their poetry editor, um, they have a lot more space and and time for that. So they do an April Poem Day challenge, and I think he does one in November also. And he'll put out a daily prompt with a, and then he'll write a poem to the prompt and put it up um, on the site. And then they will invite you to write to that prompt. And they used to allow you to post them in the comment section. They might have moved that to a Facebook group or somewhere, somewhere else. But I know people can still post them if they want. And then they actually, I don't have it with me, but they, at the end of the period, um, they will have other poets, um, published poets, pick out um, a poem from, from each day, and then they tend to put those together in a book. So uh, you can get some, some recognition there. Also, this one, I think, is from the sixth or fifth, might have been two days ago, uh, or a pre-run date because they start ahead of April so people can warm up too. But so this is right off of their website from the April Poem Day Challenge by Robert Brewer. For this prompt, he said, write a universal poem. Poem could be universal truth, universal experience, film from universal, anything you want. And that's really typical of their prompts. They will, he'll have some kind of image, but it will be um, wide open with a lot of options like that. And these tend to work better for me. Um, so for his universal poem, he wrote this short poem called Meteoroid. Uh, I orbit the sun, sensing the great void between the planets and other bodies orbiting the sun, silently burning. And that's con uh, you know, very concise, but it almost um, has the, the power of a haiku with that that last line. So uh, that's something to check out. Um, 
they do get into a lot of forms, a lot of uh, sometimes new forms that, that nobody's ever heard of before. And I'll talk more about forms later. We probably all know the, the big ones, the sonnets, the villanelles, uh, maybe gazelles. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more about forms in a moment. But right now, Let's do another prompt. So for this one, I put seven, but we'll probably only run about four or five minutes because um, we have more stuff to talk about. So for this one, find an animal whose species starts with the same letter as your first name, and then start a poem that either compares you with that animal or contrasts you with that animal or is just is about that animal without you in it or about you without the animal in it. It's anywhere you want to go with that. For example, if your name is Wendell, and I don't know if we have any Wendells here today, but you would be looking at like woolly mammoth, worm, wildcat, wombat, um, anything you want. Me being a Jim, I'm gonna be wrapped into jaguar, jumping frog, I don't know. So um, again, maybe four or five minutes, no, um, no expectations except to get maybe some images that you can use later and I will start the clock right now. Okay, take a moment to finish up um, your draft. So I wish I had thought that one out a little more before I, I went with it because um, there's not a lot of J creatures out there, but then I it's almost dark here and I thought of June bugs, even though it's early. So my starter is, or my draft, my sister and I were terrified. A bucket of rainwater at our grandmother's house was teeming with these oversized monsters still wiggling their pinchers ever so slowly in the water, and others who had fallen in exhaustion under the porch light, beckoning us from another time. And then there was the one that got stuck in my sister's white sweater, desperately clawing for either freedom or her soul. So who knows where that'll go, but it's, it's fun, kind of, in a terrifying way. Um, not afraid of June bugs anymore, so there you go. Okay, so let's talk about some forms. Um, we talk about forms and it's easy to think of them like concrete. When you pour concrete, you put out a form, which is a frame and pour the concrete into it and it'll fit exactly. And that's also, well, that's a beautiful thing about the forms. It's also can be a problem with the forms. So, um, many are actually just a pattern, like a pantoum or a gazal have no length limit. They have a pattern that you can repeat. So it can be anywhere from three or four stanzas to endless. Uh, then others, there are fixed forms like the sonnet, which has to be 14 lines, the limerick is five lines, haiku, um, English American haiku, I guess, um, typically three lines, but with with that 575, now we run a, a haiku column in the News Gazette and we're very flexible with that. Um, but there are traditionalists who will, who will, you know, rise up if, if they see one that's not. 
Um, but also form is content. So if you're not writing in a in a recognized form, you know, make up your own rhyme scheme. Um, look at uh, Robert Frost poems. A lot of his will have a rhyming scheme that is not one that's recognized as a traditional form. He's made it up for that particular poem, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, and if you don't want to rhyme at the end, put rhymes in the middle. There's a lot to do that. But also consider the context of the poem. So if I'm writing a poem that is about, uh, say my wife and I and my daughter and, and some um, some some poem event, uh, then I may use three line stanzas because there's three of us at it. Uh, it's a poem about lakes, the Great Lakes. You may use five line stanzas. And some of that comes after the poem, a lot of it, and a lot of the forms also, is kind of reworking, re-engineering it after you have the poem and the imagery and the emotion. Then you can see if it fits a form and do they support each other. Uh, and sometimes you can you want to work against the form. So if you have a really dark, dark uh, poem or subject matter, but you still want to connect with people, then you may put a a standard four four line stanza a b a b rhyming scheme with it uh, so that it's more accessible but then really there's there's a darkness underneath it uh, so those are just some things i will say be wary of fixed forms that leave no room for poetic imagination so uh, if you set out to write a sonnet, but you find yourself forcing this rhyme scheme, then maybe abandon it. And it's also okay to skip skip a rhyme on occasion. It's still a perfectly fine sonnet. And we've had a host of those come out in the last 10, 15, maybe even 20 years, where uh, it's almost to the point where if the poet says it's a sonnet, it's a sonnet, and it doesn't matter how close it is to the original sonnet forms. So uh, at the same time, forms, uh, as I said with Robert Lee Brewer, he'll have a lot of fun forms, um, like some that have a diminishing number of syllables in each line. So you get this, this kind of triangle uh, shape, but Anyway, don't be a slave to the form is all I'm saying. And then another organization that's out there uh, is Shut Up and Write. So Shut Up and Write is a national organization uh, or program, I guess, that uh, where people get together and it's not a critical workshop. It's not a generative workshop. It is a you sit down and write and you, and other people will be there at the same time. Um, there are two local that I know of, there's two Shut Up and Write um, groups going on. They're both on Meetup. One is, I think, on Thursdays in the daytime with Laura, and then there's one on, or Thursdays might be evening, and there's one on Tuesday. But if you're on Meetup, if you're not on Meetup, you can still find them. You don't have to get a membership, but um, check them out if you want. So that's for local shut up and write. And it's exactly that. Um, before the pandemic, I know they were meeting at Panera at Old Farm in Champaign, Illinois, USA, because this will be on YouTube eventually. Um, and I think now it's all Zoom, so it's all virtual. You can jump in, you're, you're doing the button chair um, process where you're saying I'm committing to writing for this this 45 minute window, and um, I know other people are doing the same thing, so that kind of helps me commit and follow through on the commitment. Although there's not going to be much interaction, which is which is perfect for a lot of people. Um, but now nationally, the Shut Up and Write they have a website you can go to, and each year they do a 
April um, prompt, but they only do the first five, or they only do five days, and they started on the fifth. Uh, so there's still a couple of days left. All the prompts are out there, but if you want to go see their prompts, here's an example of their prompt from the fifth, I believe, fifth or sixth. So write a poem and by completing the lines below. Keep it short and sweet for those who are just getting comfortable with poetry. Uh, rhyming and cadence are completely optional for the experience. Put in a, a this um, rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C. So, and then this is a great illustration if you're not, if anybody here on the on the um, Zoom isn't familiar, when you see a rhyme scheme, they're talking about the lines. So A is gonna be the first line. And then if the next line rhymes with A, it would be A, A. But in this one, they want you to have first line, and then a second line does not rhyme. Third line rhymes with the first line, fourth line rhymes with the second line, and so on for that. Um, this is looking at, at this prompt, I would not, uh, probably would, would not excel at this unless it was like an icebreaker at some event. So um, shut up and write both locally and nationally, fantastic resources. All right, we're almost done and almost out of time. So a couple of other things you can do that I do also is make your own list. It, you can develop your own prompts and find them. Um, one exercise. So A.B. Sedarian is, is generally a type of poem uh, that uses every letter of the alphabet. There are 26 lines. Some go A to Z, some go Z to A. So there's a lot of creative ways of mixing them up. But what you can also do with that um, that I learned in a, a poetry workshop not too long ago is create your own list of subjects. So take a sheet of paper, write A through Z, and then put a, a topic or subject or idea or image for each letter. And don't write about it at that moment, but come back to it um, when you are, are making time to write. So uh, mine starts out, A, I had Aztecs, and Aztecs, I haven't spelled two way because I used to own a Pontiac Aztec, which is, ends in a K, and I miss that car so bad. And then the Aztec civilization. Um, so from that, it could be any civilization, but this will remind me about other civilization. B was for buzzes, C, cartoons, D, dads, E, Eppingham, and so on. So um, I strongly suggest you do that. I keep two notebooks um, going. I have one that has like our, the prompts I did. And then I have a different one that I actually try to write poems in. So I'll take a draft that we wrote uh, or that I wrote today during this, and then I'll move it over there. And that's actually the first revision and then revise it again there. And if it's something I'm, I'm really going to, to try to keep and work with, then the third revision comes when I type it into the computer and then I revise it again there. So um, anyway, that works for me, but do what works best for you. So I like one notebook for, for pages that say this page does not count and for drafts and prompts. And then I move those over when I wanna actually start working on the poem into a different one. Other things, list every place you've lived. Write that down sometime and then revisit it and, and see what feelings, memories, good and bad images come up from looking at, at places you've lived uh, in the past. Even if it's within the same town, there's different houses, each have their own ghosts and um, saviors in them. Uh, you can also, these are probably seen these before, but why I write is just an opening you can use for a prompt, um, or you can start with why I write and just short two, three word um, reasons why you write, and then go back to that later, pick one out and expand on it. Uh, another is I am from uh, a poet in Indiana or Kentucky. Um, I think 
she's from Indiana, but Kentucky picked it up. Anyway, her name is George Ella Lyon, wrote this poem, Where I'm From. And it starts with I am from, and there's a, it's almost a list poem. But then it took on a whole nother life as a project and uh, a community effort. And people sent poems in. They set up a website. So um, you can look that up. But that's, that's always uh, another option. So you can think about different places you're from, both physical, geographical, spiritual and make that list and then come back and pick items out of that. Um, two more slides. So one is the CU Haiku. I mentioned it earlier. If you, we are always looking for Haiku. Uh, so if you write one or write five, put them in an email to cupoetry at gmail.com and with your name and the city you live in, uh, and it may wind up in the papers and online on the News Gazette website after that. So please do that. And then lastly, tomorrow, if you don't have any plans, Tehimba Jess will be here virtually um, with, in conjunction with the Alana Union Bookstore. And Solomon gave me permission to promote this non-CPL event. Uh, so that is April 8th, 2021, 7 p.m., Google this. I have links on here, but you can't use those. But if you look Google Alana Union Bookstore and go to their events, you'll see him. He's actually here today. Also, he worked with students today, and he'll have a, a public reading tomorrow at 7. He was here for Pygmalion a couple of years back uh, also and did a, a fantastic reading uh, at downtown Champaign somewhere. So that is all that I have four slides. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right here. And there we go. So I see a question in the Q&A. Yes. So they're saying, can you give an example of a pattern poem? Um, I've never heard of a pantoum or a, a gazelle, right? Gazelle. Yeah. Are these concrete poems or something else? Do you I would not consider them concrete. Uh, they are both uh, um, shooting from the hip. I don't have a example right here, although that would have been something to bring. I'll, I'll remember that next time. Um, but in a pantoum, it goes, it starts, it's a four line stanza. You have the first line and then if I remember right, the first and third line, I'm sorry, the second and fourth line of that stanza becomes the first and third line of the next stanza. So you've got this image and then you're, you're finding new ways to redefine that and you repeat these lines, but with little changes. Uh, if you Google Pantum, You'll see some wonderful examples. Jamal May has some amazing ones. Allison Joseph uh, at, at Southern Illinois University also has published some, some good pantoums. Um, Ghazal is a, a form that um, I've never been able to write one, but it also has some repetition. And um, these can go on forever because you're taking these stanzas and repeating some of the lines. So in theory, you know, it could be 20, it could be 200 stanzas, um, which would be really painful, but uh, I will. So they are something else. And um, if I do this again, I will bring examples of those. Ah, Chantel says she wrote one yesterday. Yes. And Catherine, I'm glad that that helps give some some uh, illustration of it. Yeah, we still have some time for questions. So if you want to type a question in the chat um, or raise your hand for Jim. Yeah, and it looks like Ann just put in a link uh, in the chat to a fabulous yes. Pantoom site. Ann Hart, uh, 
also a local poet from CU Poetry Group. And I think Cielo Jones is in here too. So you have all three haiku curators on online right now, which is fun, fun fact. Oh, and, and there's the link, yes, um, to the Portal to Change Community Exhibition. Thank you. Yes, yes. So while we wait for um, more questions to come through, I do want to give uh, one more reminder for um, our next workshop. So the next workshop will be on Wednesday, May 26th um, with the Writers' Lounge, um, where you'll have the chance to connect with fellow writers. Uh, so be sure to register for that one if you haven't already. And please do tell all of your friends about the amazing opportunities that Solemn and the Champagne Library have put together over the last couple of years. They have done fiction writing, uh, contest, which included workshops leading up to that, and um, now poetry events. So uh, they're, they're, it's a wonderful resource, and, and the, the changes and adaptations they've taken on uh, over the past year have, have been a really statement to their, their commitment to the community, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. And Lisa says, a, a patty, is that, would that be pronounced die? I don't know. It's doing free prompts this month, sign up for a newsletter. So copy that out and Google it if you'd like after. Prompts, um, there's a, a lot of sources for prompts. I touched on a few, but since we only had an hour, there are tons. Reddit, um, which people my age don't always understand. Uh, has a lot of prompts also, and I signed up for them. I'm getting them an email, but it seems more fiction oriented, but that's okay. So again, I wanna thank all of you for attending and um, being here. Um, I hope that you found some value in it, some some ideas for future poems. I hope you got some prompts out of it, and that those those um, writing periods weren't weren't too too pressure filled, pressure packed. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. That was wonderful. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we will see everyone at the next workshop. Have a good night.